The night before an important test is always sleepless for Martha. I guess she shouldn't have skipped so many classes. Uh-oh, Martha, you're going to make a flood all over the place. Well, you didn't quench the thirst and made a mess in the kitchen. Hurry up and wipe the puddle. Put away the book first. Towel. Look for a towel. There you go. Is it broken now? But your parents just bought you this phone. That's it. It will no longer work. Hail Tibidaba. It was just a dream. Even though not the most pleasant one. Phew. This time it was good luck. But so that the phone does not break if it falls down next time, let's make protection for it. All you're gonna need is a 3D pen, plastic of your favorite color, and a couple of minutes of spare time. The main thing is to remember to work out the sidewalls well, too. And voila! A reliable and so fashionable phone case is ready. It's time to go to school now. Oh no! Not again! Hey! The new plastic phone case did the trick. What else is a 3D pen capable of? And how does it help out every day? We've gathered the best life hacks in this video. Stay tuned. Woohoo! Dancing with your bestie is so much fun. Who can it be? And at the most unfortunate time, the girls have just perfected all the moves. A package? Interesting, and the box is big. Lit! These are Maisie's new Crocs. And they look even better than on the photo in the online shop. Huh. Erica seems to be jealous of her BFF. Who wouldn't be in such boring shoes? It's good that Erica remembered about her 3D pen. It's time to get creative. You can easily decorate boring shoes with simple decor elements. Everyone can draw a flower, right? And now let's just fill it with colored plastic. Easy peasy. Let's make a yellow center. I think it's a daisy. So cute. Nothing lifts your mood like delicious juicy berries. First, let's work up the contours of the strawberry in black. Now, let's take a brighter plastic and paint over it entirely. Oh, this red is so juicy, it even makes my mouth water. Just a couple more minutes, and we're done. Maisie will shine bright in her new Crocs. But Erica's old Crocs will shine just like a star. A couple more touches. Cool. Where are those old Crocs? It's time for an upgrade. Ah, they are awesome! I can't even believe we made all that! Well, let's try them on. Gorgeous! And the best part is, they go with any outfit. It turned out very creative! By the way, it's really easy to share this decor with your bestie. Guess what? With the help of a 3D pen, you can even change the whole color of the shoes. For example, we can make them rainbow. Just put on the overlays on top and voila! Well, new Crocs mean new dance moves. Synchronized and stylish. Katie hasn't logged into her favorite game for a long time. How is her avatar doing? It's time to wake up, sleepyhead. Let's shine and smile to a new day! First things first, let's change from these cozy pajamas. Wow, so easy and simple, I love it! Huh? What on earth is this? No way. Is it a hole in the skirt? That's right. Who would have thought that there are moths in the virtual world? It's time to remember about the 3D pen with some colorful plastic. What is in trend now? Cats, unicorns, foxes? Well, of course! We'll fill this part of the cute foxy muzzle with orange plastic, closing the hole on the skirt. Now let's make the lower half white, imitating fluffy fox cheeks. Here come the ears. We shouldn't forget about the nose, the mouth, and a couple of foxy eyes. Cute fox, check. No holes in the skirt. Also check. Looks like Kathy's avatar loves this addition to her look. Perfect patch up. It looks like someone is looking for something. I wonder what that could be. But why throw pillows? It is impossible to find anything on such a large couch. Except for your best friend, of course. It looks like one earring is in place, but the other one melted through the ground. Maisie can't go on a date like this. Luckily, the attentive Erica noticed the similarity of her friend's earrings with a houseplant. It's good that a 3D pen is always at hand. We'll take the plastic of the brightest green shade. First, let's work on one half of the leaf. Like this. 
And now goes another half. The main thing is to work up everything evenly. A little bit more. And we're done. Great. It remains only to turn this plastic leaf into a fashionable accessory. And finally, whoosh! Macy can try on her new stylish set of earrings. Today is your lucky day, girlfriend. Erica will come to the rescue in the most difficult situation. Wow, they are so bright. And a romantic image is favorably emphasized. Very stylish. Phew, the date is saved. Macy likes these earrings even more than the old ones. Thank you, resourceful bestie. Creativity in action, and now it's time for some cool music. For someone, it's seasonal cleaning time. Thoroughly sweep the dust from the shelves and throw away stuff that is no longer needed. A large closet really can store a lot of stuff. The door to Narnia, or a box with sweet baby things. Just look at these tiny socks. I can't believe that everyone had such small feet once. Oh, a little rattle. What's this? Oh, yo! Is it really the very first chewing gum in Martha's life? Yuck! What else do we have in there? Some old toys. Better give to your parents' friends with babies. As a kid, Martha used to take this doll everywhere. How cute. But the poor dolly did not stand the test of time. And again, a 3D pen comes to the rescue. With the help of masking tape, we will make the shape of a mermaid tail. Now, let's take the plastic of the most beautiful color and start making small scales. Let's move on to the tail fin. Frame comes first. And here come the scales again. The more different colors you use, the more beautiful your little mermaid turns out. Just a couple more colorful plastic rows and an old broken dolly gets a spectacular mermaid tail. Here's a little detail to finalize the look. And the old doll looks like a new one. What a delight! Now she will stay with Marta for many years to go. Wow, that's a lot of accessories. But creative Lulu is not in the mood to sit like this all day. With the help of a 3D pen, we can easily make a convenient stand for jewelry in the form of a hand. A few more layers, or better yet, several thousand layers of plastic. And we're moving on to the fingers. Just don't overdo it. Better let them be graceful. Let's keep it up. Four more fingers to go. And that's it. Stylish? Yes. Functional? Of course, yes. And it's really easy to make. Now all jewelry will be stored in one place and nothing will get lost. Voila! Who said that there's no fun in retirement? Uh-oh. One friend lost her balance. What a pity. That pearl necklace must have been many years old. Aha! The grandchildren of this old lady are always delighted with these pimply gizmos. Let's take hot glue of all rainbow colors and fill up one row. Before the glue hardens, we'll attach a chain of the desired length and... We're done! Now this granny has the most fashionable necklace. Oh wow, this really is the latest fashion trend. So cool! After so many moves, it's time to relax. If they have the strength to get up off the floor... Kathy just completed her hairstylist crash course and she can't wait to try her new skills on her bestie. Don't worry, Beth. Kathy will transform your image in an instant. She's an expert now. Well, sort of. Let's get started. What will it be? A new color or a new length? It looks like Kathy has everything at hand. Even some pretty strange things? Come on. How is this gonna help with the new hairstyle? No, no, Kathy, keep away from drastic measures this time. The first thing to do is brush the hair really well. Wow, they are so thick. I can't even see the comb already. What should we do now? Gotta roll up your sleeves. Alrighty, I wonder what is this? Whoa, how did he get in there? Oh, come on. This hair is like the attic of an abandoned house. The haunted one. All right, this is quite strange. I hope there's no magician on the other end of these handkerchiefs. And the mission to find the comb is completed. What now? Did the hair get tangled? Oops, it's not a good day for that comb. But we'll fix everything. 
Moreover, in addition to the skill of a stylist, Kathy also is a pro with a 3D pen. Let's start by filling the contour of the drawing with colored plastic. Work up all the tiny pieces well. In the end, this is the most important thing in a comb. A couple more easy moves and we can move on to the second half. After all, we need a strong handle. The main thing is to work carefully and not go beyond the contour. Cute floral decor will make anything beautiful, right? Wow, it turns out great! Well done, Kathy! Congrats on avoiding failure with your first hairstyling job! Now both Beth is happy and the stylist's tools are intact. How about a couple of selfies for Instagram? Who doesn't love spending a nice summer day at the beach? Phew, the heat. It's better to find a shadow. This girl does not release her phone for a second. Come on! A whole city could fit under such a wide brim. Cooling down with delicious ice cream, huh? Not for long. The mermaids like ice cream too. If only she could have chosen a less crowded place for her vacation. What? Can't everybody be more careful? And now they're asking for their ball back! Swing harder then, and aim better! Looks like this beach vacation is over for this girl. Poor thing didn't even get the chance to finish that watermelon. But for our crafty mermaid, it's really good. This watermelon half is just of the right shape and size to make a cool summer hat. And this plastic color for the 3D pen looks very summery too. Amazing! Now let's carefully paint over the space between the lines. A couple more finishing touches and the hat is ready. And a delicate flower will finish the look. A 3D pen can do wonders. Give this video a thumbs up if you agree, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye! Hello, and welcome to the show with everything you could ever want to make and do right, right at your, your fingertips. fingertips. I'm Tim. And I'm Naomi. And here's what's coming up on today's show. Transform some odds and ends from the kitchen cupboard into a mischievous makeover. Find out if Naomi can beat the clock in today's One Minute Make. And we show you how you can create the fun fingertips bowling alley for marbles. And for details of lots of great fingertips makes, you can check out our website, address at the end of the show. But first, the Fingertips Calculator Robot. He looks great. He can help you with your maths. And he has a secret compartment in his body. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have one of those robots at home that could help you with the tidying up? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about one of those robots that helps to build cars? Yeah. Or one of those magic robots that makes people disappear? If only, Tim. No, what I'd have liked when I was at school is a robot that was programmed to help me with my maths homework. Yeah. Maybe like a big red one mm. with some pipe cleaner hair and googly eyes and maybe yeah. some crazy buttons, you know? Oh. What? Like this one? Well, what a coincidence! <laughs> this is our fingertips calculator robot, made for maths. Simply type in a sum on his tummy. Two plus two equals four. Yep, correct. And then, of course, if you turn him round, he's got a secret compartment on the back where you can store all your bits and pieces. And we've given this fella a fingertips difficulty rating of three. So let's get going with some simple high-tech building. Start by recycling an old cardboard box. It could be whatever size you like, but just make sure it's big enough to store all your various bits and pieces. When you've decided which one to use, this long, thin brown one looks good to me, just remove the back part and put that to one side, which leaves you with the lid. And next you need to draw around a calculator right in the middle of that front piece, like this. Calculators are really cheap to get hold of these days. You can often pick them up in your local pound shop. And when you've drawn all the way around it, cut that rectangle out, and it'll look like this. And then get hold of the other half of your box. This can be your robot's back. And you need to cut a kind of door shape in this. You can see we've snipped the corner to make it easy to pull open and close. And then you need to put the front and back sections of your box back together. Now you've got the robot's body, you just need to make him a head. And for this, you use a cardboard box just slightly smaller than the one that you used for his body. Next, he needs some arms and legs. And the best thing for these? Plastic cups. 
put those in position. And then you can attach them with some strong glue or tape. When all the bits and pieces are stuck firmly in place, you've got your basic robot. Now, just check that he stands up. And if he doesn't, you might just need to adjust a few things. And now it's time to add the calculator to the robot. So take another piece of card, place your calculator on it and draw a line a couple of centimetres wider all the way around. And fortunately for me, you don't have to be neat. Cut that rectangle out like this and tape your calculator to the middle of it. Don't use glue or you might ruin your calculator. Now, this bit should fit inside your robot. Just open up the door and pop it through that hole that you cut earlier. There, perfect fit. And you just need to leave this piece to one side for later. To add some details to your robot, simply cut some card shapes and get some bottle tops like these. And then simply stick them into place. And when all the details are stuck, you can give them a coat of paint. And it's a good idea to use a few colours so you can pick out some of the details. Then it's just a case of opening the door at the back, putting your calculator into position and taping that into place. And here he is, the mathematical robot, with a few more bits and pieces added at the end, like googly eyes and pipe cleaners. And, of course, you can turn him round and pop some things in the back. Genius. And you can invent these in any design you like. Just make sure you make a hole that's the right size for your calculator. What about this giant silver robot here holding a jumbo calculator? Very handy if you've got huge equations to solve. <laughs> Oh, what about this blue baby bot with fun foam circuit board and pipe cleaner wires? Aww. What a fab fingertips idea. Build a robot calculated to help you with your maths homework. Hey, Tim, you know what you were saying about wanting a robot to make you disappear? Yeah. Press that. Oh, he looks really friendly. <laughs> oh, nice one, mate. This is Makeover Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you how to make something by recycling stuff you'll probably find lying around your home. So, what about this lot? A load of bits and bobs from the kitchen cupboard and... <laughs> one of these, a whoopee cushion. And you can get these very cheaply from toy and joke shops. Just imagine the possibilities. With a little bit of fingertips know-how, I'm going to show you how to transform these... into one of these, a fingertips whoopee cushion disguise. It's a chintzy cushion on the outside with a rip-roaring surprise on the inside. And we give the whoopee cushion disguise a fingertips difficulty rating of... two. So why not blow your mates away with this mischievous mate? Start by gluing a couple of tea towels together. And it's probably best to ask an adult before you start doing this. Leave one edge open to create a sort of envelope. And when that's done, you can decorate your cushion however you like. And to start, we're going to use some old rubber gloves. Cut them into any shape you like. We're going to make a flower. And when it's finished, it will look like this. Stick your flower in position on your tea towel and you can do as many as you like. Now take your dishcloths and cut out some circular shapes and stick them to the middle of your flowers. Until your cushion looks like this. And as you can see, we've added some more frills cut from the dishcloth scraps all around the edges. For a bit of granny glamour, cut up one of these sparkly scourers so the strips are roughly a centimetre wide. Stick them on top of the frill using strong glue. Go all the way around. Look at that. I reckon any granny would love it. Next, take some stuffing. And this could be anything. We're using the innards of an old pillow. And stuff your cushion like this. Now, cut out a piece of cardboard that, when folded, is long enough to go around your inflated whoopee cushion. And secrete it beneath the stuffing. And when you've done that, it will look something like this. Great, isn't it? And now all you need is an unsuspecting granny 
or a mate to try it out. <laughs> and if you like that, you're going to love these. What about a dishcloth boat cushion? <laughs> or this fabulous felt cushion, complete with piles of cherries? <laughs> or this 60s-inspired thrush cushion? <laughs> Great, aren't they? So why not grab your granny and give her a fright with a fingertips whoopee cushion disguise? You'll be blown away! Got a minute? Because this is the part of the programme where we show you something which will take under a minute to make using odds and ends from around the house. Today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to time. And this is all I need. Lovely Ooh. picture of you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, now, we're not going to tell you what it is, so see if you can work it out as Naomi makes it. Okay. Are you ready? I am, and I'll tell you what, I think when I'm finished with this minute, mate, you're going to find it extremely attractive. Sure, I will. Is, is that a clue? Yes, it might be. What I will say is we're going to have a lot of fun when we're done with it. Three, two, one, you're off! Right, take a cardboard box lid and stick some glue all over the bottom. Five seconds. Like that. Then add a piece of coloured card. That fits in perfectly. Then a lovely photograph of you, yeah, Tim. Very fetching. I'm going to cut you out. 15 seconds. Got to go around your face. Careful on the ears. Yep. 20 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> and then I've got oh, to ouch. cut your hair off. Sorry. Nearly 30 seconds. Hairdo. There we are. And your hairline. That's ear. Ooh, there we are. Ooh. Cut in there. Lovely. Right, now a bit more... Ooh. 40 seconds. Blue, nearly flew off the table. A bit more glue <laughs> on the bottom there for your photograph. What do look rather dazzling. Uh, 15 that seconds to go. In place. Now you need to string together now, some tape 10, clips. 9, A couple of little blobs of glue seven, on either six, ear. 5... Four, three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> how that. close was that? Well, 58 seconds. Uh, now, Naomi, it's a seriously dodgy picture of me and some paper clips. Why? Well, when the glue has dried, you need to get hold of a magnet, whoops, Ooh. like on this one, and right. then if you move the magnet around underneath the box, <laughs> you can have fun making some quite ridiculous hairdos. Right, I'm not letting you get away mm. with that. It's time for some fun. Oh, no, I'll be kind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you some... Uh, well, a weird hat first. Give you a flat top. There you go, look at that. A bit of oh, a witch's course. hat. Nice. Dancing hair. Let's see if we can do dancing <laughs> hair. Well, what about... <laughs> we'll try and give you some ears. Long Animal hair. ears, are ready? Long hair. There we go. That's Very nice. Worked. <laughs> so why not grab a stopwatch? And make a game of magnetic hairdos. And you won't have to pay any money to make it. <laughs> Awful. This is Fun Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you something that's fun to make and fun to play. This is the Fingertips Marble Bowling Alley. Now, the aim of this game is to bowl your marbles up the right-hand side of the alley so they deflect off the elastic bands at the top and land in these score traps on the other side. Take it in turns with a mate to see who has the best marble control and keep a tally of your scores as you play. Right, so I'll go first. This is a game of skill and practice. All right, then. <laughs> Oh, one, <laughs> one point. point. A lot of skill there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two points. Oh, oh what a miss. the board. Oh, see if I can beat two. <laughs> Got a card. One point. One point. Oh, another two one. Points. Two points. Come on. Oh, oh seven. seven. Well Yay, done. I am the champion. <laughs> and we give marble bowling a fingertips difficulty rating of two. Nice and simple, but it may take some time. To start, take a shallow rectangular box like this one and paint the outside edges any colour that you like. At one end of your box, cut about half so you get a kind of flap like that. Next, cover the base of your box in two contrasting colours of fun foam or thin card and stick those in place. Next, cut another strip of card, the same height as your box, but this needs to be a little bit longer, and cover one side of that with some fun foam. Fold it and place it inside your box so you get a kind of pointed end to your alleyway. Fold the flap back too, as this will be your marble catcher, and then glue this flap and the V-shape so they're stuck firm. Now, it's a good idea to stick a couple of pieces of cardboard box card just behind your V to help keep it held securely in place. Now, carefully make two holes just next to your V, one here and one here. Take an elastic band and a dolly peg 
feed the elastic band onto the peg and then push the loose end back through the hole. So it comes inside your box. Then pull it all the way through and stretch the elastic band towards the centre. Take another dolly peg and push this down over the centre of the V and then just pull the elastic band up onto that peg. You need to do this on both sides of your box. And when you've done that, you'll have elastic bands on both sides of your V that the marbles can bounce off. Once that's done, all you need to do is glue some lengths of kebab sticks into rows wide enough for marbles and add some scores to those too. Wedge up your whole game at one end with a small stack of card and you can see we've added some painted decoration and even some peg spectators, or as we like to call them, spectators. <laughs> and now we're ready to play the game. <laughs> he After shoots. you, Tim. He scores! One point! Oh, oh, ten. ten. Nice work. One point. A oh, two. <laughs> oh. So why don't you have a go and make a fingertips marble bowling alley? Just make sure you don't lose your marbles. You would think this was the end, but it was not. Mike hid in the closet, but suddenly... Oh, what? What was it? The closet sucked him in! <laughs> oh, no way! <laughs> See? Told you I would scare you. You're not as brave as I am. No one is. Oh no! There is someone in the bushes behind! Well, what are you talking about? Huh? Uh-oh! Sammy! We've got a new playbook. Come check it out! Ooh, you scared me! But don't tell anyone, okay? Welcome to the spookiest Ban Ban Kindergarten! I'm here and I'm ready! Let's play and get super prizes! <laughs> okay, look! We must help our guardian pass all the levels! I'm on it! First, let's collect the key cards! Gotcha! This one's next! Keep it up, Sue! And the last one! Press one! Press two! Aha! Here's the bonus card! Hey! I thought it was my bonus! <laughs> ah! Oh! You're not scary at all! And I'm going to fetch the next key card! Save me from that scary thing! <laughs> Yay! Ah, only a real monster can pass this level! Let's pretend we are one of them and see if anyone's DNA fits! I will get the key card! Hey! Not this time! We're moving on! Now, who's the smartest in the monster's classroom? Of course it's me! Did I pass the audition? Let's put you to the test! Sit over here! Who can solve the first example? Raise any of your limbs! We got the first answer! Bingo! Now, this one is a little bit more challenging! Once again, our active student answers Correctly! Numbers are too easy! Better check this out! Time's up! I know it! My inspiration is my life! Alright, we are at the next level! Yay! I'm gonna catch all the little appeal birds! Hey! Play along! Come on, help me! Uh. Who's hiding behind this door? So, who's that? What's in there? Come on, show me already! It's the big appeal of mommy! Catch me if you can! Hey, stay back! I am the scariest one here! I can act like a bird! See? I think I'm becoming one! Oh, I guess something's happening! Oh! <laughs> Do slimes hatch from the eggs too? Yep, there's gonna be a new slime soon! Just wait! Okay, come here, you little feathers! Now the mummy will be happy! All the little appeal cheeks are settled in the cozy nest! And we'll keep moving! Hey, Sue! Cat! Oh, Sammy! I'm all sticky now! I need a break to clean up! Sure, sure! Take your time, Susie! In the meantime, I will play! I'm ready to join in! Huh? You're standing on the wrong field, Sammy! So what? I have one more chance! Don't fail me! Got it? Let me see. Congratulations! You win! Let's keep going! This is the game to train your aim! <laughs> I'm the best 
said that. Make way, Susie. Bullseye! <laughs> this maze is on me, then. Let's try not to fall into the black abyss. Whee! We passed! The next level is waiting! Can't we stay here? I'm just getting the hang of it! Huh. Why don't you better check out this hide-and-seek game? Seriously? Knock, knock! Come out, whoever you are! <laughs> ah! No, no! You better come back in! Please! Okay, the green door looks good! Mm -hmm. ah! Who is this stupid myrtle? Uh-oh! Hi there! <laughs> This isn't a game! It's a scary room! Ah! Nope, I'm not going in there! What? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Ah, finally a way out! Susie, follow me! Good job, Sammy! Yay! It's a board game! This round's on me! Uh-oh! Am I being chased? I'm almost at the finish line. The monster is getting closer. Oops. Bye bye, monster. Ooh, that one was close. <laughs> at that, the guardian wins. Cheers to our hero. Oh, it's his trophy. The creepy monster became a cute squish. Awesome. I will reveal the secret behind this mysterious playbook. Ooh. <laughs> Did you get the pictures? Uh, you ruined the mood! <laughs> that was my tricky plan all along! Where is the slime monster? <sighs> hey, put me back! I'm not done yet! With uh, what? Cutting out the pictures, see? Okay, then I'll do the final design! <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to cheat with getting those key cards again? Sammy, Sammy. You see, slimes don't give up. Now that's something new. Just take these pieces, Miss Smarty Pants. Oh, the great Ban Ban. Put these pieces in their places. Ah. Hey, Ban Ban, help me too. Sammy, you are misusing the pieces again. But it's no fun the other way around. Oh. Wait, no, you are stuck. Funny this way. Hey, Tibidaba, we sorted it out. I got it. Stay still. Good thing I'm sticky. <laughs> Sue, take the arrows. Oh, great. You and I are on the same playbook page. <laughs> Come on, you. I want to try a magic trick. Throw all the parts in here. Okay, I can't wait to see what did you come up with. <laughs> Alrighty, bibbidi bobbidi, slimy subscribity, Sammy infinity. Okay, it's done. And what did we get? Let's open this. Oh my! Hello there. Uh, can I go now? Let's try again. Magic cauldron cook the playbook. Yay! It worked. Wow, this page's design is a real chef's kiss. The cauldron magic needs a recharge, so don't be a slacker, Sue. <laughs> hey, monsters, hurry up and hide from our Sam. Aha, it's time for a super injection. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I didn't agree to that. Oh, hi, let's be friends. The next is the classroom. One ten dollar a piece. The teach won't notice. Oh, I'm so slick. And here's the whiteboard. <laughs> I have an awesome idea. Check this out. Two plus Ron. Oh, Sammy, stop making stuff up. Fine. Can I at least nickname the monsters? Done. Good job, Sam. Oh, I'm such a busy bee. Now I need to learn their feelings. 
Birdies like to eat good food just like me. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Here, little ones. Here, yum, yum, yum. The soul is in slow. I'm literally dragging her into going. <laughs> Unlike you, I'm a natural snail whisperer. Oh, my feta! I should have gotten everything by car from the beginning. Cool! The delivery arrived on time. Do you need a special construction? I can do that. Let me check. Wow! What a quality! <laughs> oh, and this is Sam's favorite level. So help me here. I'm ready for anything, anytime, and anyhow. All done. Um, almost. Uh, okay, you know what? I did that on purpose. If you say so. So, how about another round? Sure. There's just one thing left. A super prize for the winner. You have to win me over to get this back. Dollies, beware and behold! Sammy, are you ready to go to the world of Ban Ban? Ha, Sue, I know it's you, and this is my mask! Get it back, come on! <laughs> Two points for Sue and zero for Sam! Give us your likes, subscribe, and see you soon! Ah, Sue, get back and I'll trick you too! show with everything you could ever want to make and do right at your fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And all this week we have a special lineup of shows uh, to give you some fantastic ideas to make for bonfire night. Chilly autumn days. And even Christmas. But as Halloween's up first, we've got some great things you could make to guarantee your day is full of spine-chilling fun. So let's check out what's coming up on today's show. In Food Fingertips, we'll show you how to make some ghoulish goodies for a spooky Halloween feast. We've got an idea for recycling paper napkins and polystyrene cups to make a row of little fingertips ghosties. Find out how to make your very own glow-in-the-dark trick-or-treat t-shirt. For all the details on today's makes, you can video the show and watch it later. Look on our website or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. Halloween. It makes you think of ghosts and ghouls. And pumpkins. But why do we make pumpkin heads? Well, it's to get rid of all those ghosts and ghouls. But have you ever tried carving a pumpkin? It takes absolutely ages, and then you're left with loads of mess and seeds and pulp. And when you've finally finished it, it doesn't take long before it starts to rot. So this Halloween, why not make a fingertips everlasting pumpkin? It looks great, doesn't it? Really realistic. And the best thing about it is, it lasts forever. So to guarantee a ghost-free zone all year long, start by blowing up a balloon. Go on, her, give it some welly. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. And then cover your balloon in paper mache, but this time, instead of using newspaper, use coloured tissue paper. Now, it looks cool and it also saves you painting it afterwards. So, you want to start by pasting on bits of the tissue with PVA glue mixed with water. And you want to do about three layers, so just keep going all over your balloon. Now, here comes the clever bit, because with the everlasting pumpkin, you haven't got to carve out the eyes, nose and mouth. Oh, no, you just stick them on. So get some black paper and then just draw them on. Now, I'm going to start with a very scary pumpkin mouth. Give them some nice, big, jaggedy teeth. There we go. And once you're happy with your features, cut them out. 
And there you go, Stevie, you'll be needing those. Right, thank you. Ooh, OK, so let's uh, kick off with the eyes and nose. Just position them there and there, like that. OK, the nose bits just underneath the eyes. So there's one there and one just there. And, of course, the mouth at the bottom. And he's got a nice big mouth that goes just there like that. Then you want to cover the whole balloon one more time with another layer of PVA glue, but this time not mixed with water. And don't worry, because remember, PVA glue does dry clear. And when it has dried, you can just draw on some nice pumpkin segment lines right the way around your pumpkin head, like that. And now the bit I don't particularly like doing, but here goes, popping the balloon. Oh, there we go. And just neaten off this edge all the way around here. Now, this next bit you may not want to do, but believe me, it will make your pumpkin head look great. You just want to give him a bit of a squeeze. So here goes. Just want to squeeze his face like this all the way around to give him a nice, crumpled, realistic look. It does look so good, doesn't it? Now, your Everlasting Fingertips pumpkin is nearly complete. Just one more thing to add. It's one of these. It's called a push light. Now, you can get them from most supermarkets or hardware stores, and the nice thing is they work on batteries, so no need for plugs, which means you can put them virtually anywhere. Just push on your light, position your pumpkin, and then all you have to do is wait till night time. And your everlasting pumpkin will ensure that your house will be forever spook-free. Won't it? See? <laughs> Witches brew. And spiderweb cakes. If you're having a bit of a Halloween party... Or if you just want to get spooky for the night... Then why not prepare a feast of terrible treats and ghoulish goodies that are guaranteed to go down a scream? <coughs> this is Food Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you something that's fun to make and great to taste. And these witches brew fizzy floats are really fun to make and are dead easy to do. Now, start things off by decorating a tall glass with a jelly snake and fill it nearly to the top with some limeade. Then get a nice big dollop of ice cream and in it goes and watch this fizz. Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> Already fantastic. Then add a dash of strawberry sauce just to make it mm. look particularly gory. Look at that. And it's fizzing even more. Look. Now, just add a straw and there you have one witch's broom ready in a flash. The question is, are you brave enough to try? Oh, that is magic. And to go with your witch's brew, how about some of these spiderweb cakes? Now, you could buy some plain cakes from a shop, but if you'd like to make your own, we've got a recipe on our website, and we'll give you that address at the end of the show. Just click on food. Now, when you have your cake, you want to ice it with basic white icing, which is just icing sugar mixed with water. So, just put some icing on the top of your cake and spoon it all around. Here we go. Now, when the icing's still wet, you want to add a black spiral using some tubing icing. So start in the centre and work your way right round to the outside. Then take a cocktail stick and, starting in the centre, drag out your black lines. And look at that, you're already getting a fantastic spiderweb shape. And go all the way around like this. Hey, it's looking very nice. Then, of course, don't forget to add your little spider. <laughs> so why not spook up your evening with some food fingertips ghoulish goodies? <laughs> Ghosties, spooks and ghouls. That's what Halloween is all about. And a row of fingertips ghosts are guaranteed to send a shudder down anyone's spine. This is Little Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you something to make, uh, recycling bits and pieces you'll probably find around your home. And today we're going to recycle paper napkins and polystyrene cups. Now, the good thing is these spooky spirits are dead easy to make. Start off by peeling the layers of a napkin. Now, this just makes them really light so they'll move in any draft. Now, on one of the corners, you want to draw a spooky face like we've done on this one here. And then lay this over your cup, just like that. And to secure it in place, again, couldn't be easier. Just get yourself a bit of thread, 
place that over your cup and a paper fastener just secures it in position like that and there you go your very first fingertips ghosty just make a row of them and hang them up if you can catch hold of them that is see what i mean Now, as it's nearly Halloween, we thought it was about time we found something to do using these fluorescent fabric paints. Now, you can buy them in most craft and fabric shops, and with them, you can make some very cool Halloween trick-or-treat T-shirts that glow in the dark. They look cool, don't they? And there's a great technique for making them. Because each of these is perfectly symmetrical, it means you only have to draw half the picture. Now, for any of these spooky designs, you need to get your fingertips on a piece of paper and then fold it in half like this. Then get a pen and you want to draw half a set of skinny ribs. So start at the top by drawing a funny kind of E shape like this. Nice curvy lines just past the halfway mark. Then below that, two little bumps and then below this, a deflated balloon kind of shape. Now, if you don't want to draw your own, you could go onto our website where you'll find a template you can print off. And then, get cutting out. Then, if you open it out, you get a skeleton skinny rib stencil. Nice one. Now, lay out your cutout onto a T-shirt, and a black T-shirt is best for this. Then, with a piece of chalk, go around your skeleton outline. Now, here's a fingertips top tip. Place something in between your T-shirt this way. Any paint you put on the front won't go through to the back. Then, get painting. Now, you want to start off by filling in your skeleton shape with white paint, and this will act as an undercoat. And when it's dry, go over the top of this with fluorescent paint. So let's... There we go. Now, when you've covered your skeleton ribs, you want to follow the instructions on the paint pot, as some of this fabric paint you have to iron on to make sure that it doesn't run when you put it in the washing machine. And using this symmetrical drawing technique, you can make lots of different designs. How about a scary spider? <coughs> or even a flappy bat? So treat yourself with a fingertips Halloween trick-or-treat t-shirt that glows in the dark. And why not give someone a fright? Boom. Don't open your eyes just yet. One more step, and... Ta-da! How do you like your new house? Oh? Oh, Sammy, I'm surely happy, but... I knew it! It's not your style, right? Hey, Sammy, don't be upset. It's easy to fix. Really? Of course! But I'm gonna need your help. Hi, guys! How about another Disney princess craft? Today, we're going to use a lot of foam board and cardboard to build a miniature house. For Belle! A beauty from the Beauty and the Beast! By the way, have you seen our other Disney videos? You can find them on our channel! I strongly recommend you to watch them! Frankly speaking, Belle's story inspires me so much! She was ready to sacrifice her own life to save her father! And I'm ready to sacrifice my best colorful paper for the craft! <laughs> These stripes do look very cool. You have good taste. My advice always comes in handy. So the base is ready. Let's move on to the walls. There you go, Sue. I think it can be useful. Sammy, it looks fabulous. Such a nice French-style window. But this way, it looks much better. Although, the true beauty is hidden inside. Belle knew that and turned the beast back into a prince. Really? Oh, you scared me, little prankster! I can turn your fear into joy with one light whoosh! Well, what do you say? It's cute, but don't ever scare me! And I can make a whoosh, too! Isn't it cool, huh? You're a real whoosher, Sue! And you'll be happy to know that we'll have more than one floor! Oh, I can't wait to see the result! Once again, we'll start with the floor. I don't get it, Sue. We don't build a central wall there because of the balcony. But it's gonna be cold living without a wall. Brr. Don't get ahead of yourself, Sammy. We're about to make something interesting. Just be careful with the cutter, guys. Here we go. Ask an adult to help you, people! 
To make the second floor fit the style, let's add some details. What if we add feathers? Or rhinestones? Or ribbons? Sammy, rather than just hanging here, you could attach the other walls, you know. Besides, everything you listed is not in Belle's style. She prefers something simple, but elegant. Hey! You, Sue! It turned out to be much harder! So I totally entrust you to proceed! <laughs> Such a sneaky little slime! It's coming out nicely! Would you look at this, guys? So nice! And it goes right here! Sue, look! Do you notice something new about me? Whoa! whoa. Ugh, I grew up! Just for a sec! Are you okay? Be careful next time! Of course I am! And armed with creativity! These columns clearly lack some color! <laughs> Here comes the second one! <laughs> oh, I'm so good! Ooh, it's so pretty! Just let me add a teeny tiny detail! Sure, Sue! We both have a perfect taste! By the way, this is one of the reasons why you need a friend! To be by your side and to help if you're in need! Or to say whether your new crown fits you! <laughs> Sammy, thanks for this banister! Watch out! The crazy roofs are coming! <laughs> and they seem to like gold! <laughs> well, I think they came out really great! Give a thumbs up if you agree, guys! I wouldn't say no to living in a castle like this if it were real! But it is! <laughs> Look up Chateau de Chambord in France! Wow! It's huge! Awesome! Our version is not that big, but there definitely will be enough space for Belle! We will be right back! And you guys have time to subscribe! Tale as old as time, true as it can be, barely even friends, then some bunny bends, unexpectedly. Sounds familiar! Sue, so what was that? Uh, seriously? Didn't you recognize it? That's the title song from Beauty and the Beast that won an Oscar for Best Original Song! Really? I thought only a serious Hollywood movie can win it! Oh no, Disney movies win Oscars quite often, to name some The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, The Lion King… Sue, I have some business to do. Will you manage to deal with this without me? Would you look at this busy slime? <laughs> And the last touch. Done! This is a perfect spot for the fireplace! Hmm, looks a bit unfinished. What else can we add here? How do you like my new style? <laughs> That's exactly what we needed! I can't believe I didn't figure that out by myself! You're really lucky to have me! I have so many ideas! You're right! This is so much better now! Oh, I can imagine Belle and her prince sitting here sipping cocoa in the cold winter days! Oh yeah, but to make this fantasy come true, they need something to sit on! There we go! And here is the second one! Sue! I took care of the coffee table! Oh, it would look good on this soft, fluffy rug! Right, let me… Done! Awesome! Let's move on to the second floor! What if we placed a kitchen here? <laughs> Sammy, what a funny thing you're saying! A kitchen upstairs? Besides, don't you remember those cute little servants from the movies? They will take care of all the household chores! Let's just imagine that they live somewhere in this castle! Oh, I wish I had servants too! I would eat cakes every day and would never do a spring cleaning! <laughs> Wouldn't you get bored really quickly with a menu like that? All right, Belle's gorgeous room calls for a king-size bed with fluffy pillows and nice bedding. Oh! Oh! I know what we should add! These are lovely! Actually, there's one character that didn't say a word during the whole movie. And it's extremely important to the story. I know, I know! Do you mind, Sue? Of course not! It's the rose! That's right! And it has a separate room in the castle! Speaking of flowers, why don't we add more here… and right here! Sue, The house came out so great! I want to examine every detail! Ah! 
Sammy. You're blocking the view and our friends can't see anything. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. Let's check it out together. Do this. Invite Belle in. Step here, Miss Princess. Well, what do you say about this? Oh, Sammy, it's just what I needed. How did you manage to build the house of my dreams? Great! I'm so happy! Come on, I'll show you the second floor! Oh, I'm so happy! I'm so thrilled! Hey, Sammy, don't forget to say goodbye to our viewers. If you liked our craft today as much as I do, give us a thumbs up! Don't forget to hit the bell button so you don't miss our next video! And subscribe to our channel, of course! See you soon! Bye-bye! Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da, huh? It's me! <clears throat> Welcome to Ariel's birthday party, your invitation, please! Here you go, Sammy. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, well. Oh, everything is fine, but I still can't let you in, Susan. Huh? Why? You don't fit into the dress code. Oh, but what about my bracelets with seashells? And check out my nail polish. I chose glistening colors. They look like fish scales. It's all good, but what's up with your shoes? Oh, Sammy, come on. Where was I supposed to find sea-themed shoes? So you're a crafter after all, you could make them! Oh, you're right, but I need an assistant. Say no more, I'm on it! <laughs> Hi guys, today we're gonna introduce you to sea fashion. Yeah, we even delayed Ariel's birthday party for this, it's a big deal. <laughs> Sammy, you look like you've come from the ocean. Ugh. Some guests were not very happy, but what can I do? Your look should be spectacular! Sorry, I appreciate your hardship, Sammy, so let's begin. We'll need some foam, beads, sequins, and feathers! Sue, so, why are these sneakers here? Do you want to make over them? Well, they look good to me, but for the sake of crafting… It's a special day and we need a special pair of shoes! I'll be right back! And what should I do in the meantime? Sammy, where are you? And here are our special guests! An amazing pair of high heels! <gasps> Sammy, they look awesome! Where did you find them? <laughs> you need to check your wardrobe more often! Guys, this transparent heel is so on point! Do you agree? I like it! Guys, support us with a thumbs up! Hmm, but they don't quite match the party theme, right? Let's see what we can do! Let's take some purple fabric and cut out the shape of the inner part of the shoe! Watch your hands! <clears throat> For the toes part! <laughs> yeah, all right, those jokes of yours. Let's glue it here. This color already reminds me of sea corals. Under the sea, corals are wetter, high heels are better, take it from me! <laughs> Sammy, you should sing that version at the party today! Spare me, Susan, or Sebastian won't talk to me again! Oh, that's a scary thought. Guys, our shoes originally don't have counters, so we're making them now. Don't glue your hands to the shoes! If you repeat this craft, it'll be tricky to escape then. I made it right! Look, we have an identical pair! Very well, Sammy! Do you mind if we exchange them for the next part? Okay, but it seems like my shoe is a bit prettier. <laughs> Just kidding! And now let's add some sparkles! Woo! Scales! 
I like sparkles on the water. Or it's just blurring your eyes, Sammy. <laughs> anyway, they fit this transparent heel so well. Awesome! And I know what will make it even better. <sighs> Couldn't he tell us first and then go away? <sighs> Secretive as always. Anyway, guys, how about glittering? Oh, so they're so shiny it hurts my eyes. Oh, and I brought something. For me? Come on, let me see it. Ta-da! It's not for you, actually, but for the shoes. And I have a fantastic idea how to upgrade this. Stay tuned. Sammy, did you bring what I asked for? Even more, Susan. Check out how pretty these stones are. Um, Sammy, when I asked you to bring decorative stones, I meant gemstones. All right, let's make these smaller then. Yep, they're perfect. Then you need tweezers or we'll lose them all immediately. Ah, oh, you read my mind, Sammy. Let's glue our stones to the fish tail. Huh. Oh, so I found the smallest one. Let's put it there, too. All right. We'll glue stones of different sizes. Trust your intuition, guys, and keep going. This way. White, blue, turquoise, they look like tiny water drops. All right, half of the fishtail is done. Shall we leave it like this? Are you kidding me? We still have so many decorative stones. Let's not do things halfway. You're so easy to trick, Sammy. <laughs> Here's the second half. Oh, so pretty. Come on, Sue, place it on the shoe or I'll steal it. <laughs> oh, we should act fast. Whoosh! Our shoe grew its own fishtail. Look, the other shoe copied her sister. <laughs> hmm, but now the front part looks out of place. Then let's give it a fishy look. Ooh, these beads perfectly imitate fish scales. Let's try them on. Hmm, is it just me or does this look cool too? Wow, Sammy, it's gorgeous. Come on, give it to me. <laughs> it looks so shiny. Let's use it this way. No, my precious, I can't leave you too. <sighs> Sammy, why so dramatic? I meant we can use them both. So the bees are still in the game? Hey, you tippy <laughs> I almost slipped. Guys, don't repeat Sam's dances at home. The fish shoes, though, are perfect for a DIY project. So you promised. Let's add the beads right now. Oh, you're insatiable, Sammy. <laughs> okay, let's make a bead shower. Oh, like can you like somebody pinch me? Ouch! Not so hard, too. At least now you know it's real, Sammy. I need you in a clear mind to continue this craft. Are you saying I'm crazy? Oh, God, Susan! <laughs> I'm afraid we should reschedule our duel for another day. Are we a team for now? <laughs> Sure, here's a second piece. Let's do it together, Sue. Guys, you can't imagine what we've just made. Now our fish can talk. What would it say about the next decor piece? Hmm. Hmm. Ah, got it. Sue, bring the sequins. Lots of them. Something interesting will be happening here very soon. Guys, stay with us. All right, let's see. Not that. No, no, no. Uh, can be better. Uh, no, definitely no. Oh, what's this doing here? Uh, Sammy, it's just a sea urchin. What were you looking for? Uh, I wanted to find the most beautiful fish scale for inspiration, but that sea urchin doesn't have scales at all. Oh, I see. Don't worry. I've seen a lot of fish in my life, so we're not going to fail. We need scales on the sides and some in the front, too. Okay. By the way, don't these scales remind you of something? Yeah, armor! Actually, armor was inspired by fish scales and their protective attributes. Oh, then I have to protect myself, too. Oh, can you help me with the back, Sue? Sammy, have you forgotten why we're here in the first place? Ariel is waiting for her party. Oopsie, you're right. Then let's finish the shoes, quick! Please help me, my knight in shining armor. I'm always ready. Here you are. Thanks. I think that's not enough, Sammy. Wow, now we're talking. All right. Guys, check out how shiny they are. I'm absolutely in love. Da -da -da -da. Holy cannoli, how can fish look forward with 
their eyes on different sides. <laughs> a flatfish has both eyes on the same side. You're not a flatfish, are ya? <laughs> no, Sammy, we'll place the eyes on different sides of our fish shoes. Guys, do you want to see more sea-themed crafts? Then give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> It'll be quite unusual to use decoration feathers as a fancy fin, right? <sighs> Shiver me cheddars, I haven't ruined them for good, have I? If you keep going this way, you certainly will. Let's find the best place for them. Yeah, good! Shoo, some rhinestones are left. Maybe we'll find a use for them, too? Hmm, let's see. I think we can do it. We can glue them right here. Cool, huh? Yeah, awesome. Uh, wait, are you talking about me? Yeah, Sammy. And about the rhinestones on the shoes, too. <laughs> wow, they look like real diamonds. You'll be the queen of the party, Susan. Really? Where's my crown, then? Oh, how could we forget? I'll be back. What is he up to? I hope he's not stealing the crown from King Triton himself. Ta-da! It'll look perfect on your shoes. <sighs> Sammy, tell me the truth. Where did you get this? <laughs> I simply asked King Triton and uh, he gave it to me. And one more copy. Guys, our fish shoes will become royal soon. Want to see the result? Follow me. Let you in. Huh? What is it this time? These shoes are just too pretty. <laughs> All eyes will be on you. Oh, well, I can live with that. Ariel and I will have the time of our lives today. Hey, don't forget about me. Guys, did you enjoy this transformation? Give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to stay updated. Fish you good luck. <laughs> Bye. Hello, everyone. Are you ready for an arty party? We're in the party pad! It's the perfect place for a party! So, let's get party! It's the Mini Makers! <laughs> Hello, my friends! Now, let me ask you, are you feeling arty? Yeah! Well, let's party! Here we go! We're gonna have a party and look who I've invited The shakes and sweats He's so excited All the mini makers are partying too But most importantly We invite you Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one Let's go! Let's get arty Everybody party Come on everyone Let's get arty It's great to see you, my yeah. friend. Now, what shall we make our party about today? Hmm, uh... you ever think about it? Have you got any ideas? Come on, Mini Makers, <laughs> over here, my friends. That's it. Now, look at the screen. We're going to show you some clues. See if you can guess what our party's going to be about today. Very good. And I'll give you one last clue, Mini Makers. Where is it? Something fishy going on here. Aha! Here it is. What is it? Clownfish! That's right, it's my toy, Clownfish. So today, Mini Makers, our party's going to be about... That's right, we're going to have fishy fun at our party today. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> There's a shark! 
shark, everyone! Mm -hmm. Sh wah, wah, wah. Oh, Scraps, I thought you were a real shark! <laughs> <laughs> very funny and very fishy. Huh? <laughs> yeah! Yeah! So, my friends, let's go underwater for our fish party and make an arty party picture. What shall we use today? Paint! Paint brushes! Cardboard! Lots of glue! Stickers. Well done, Minnie Maker. Some fantastic ideas there. And in fact, it's just given me a brilliant idea. Let's get Artie at our party and make a colourful cardboard fish, complete with cotton buds for pointy spines. But first, we'll need some things from... The Needle Ship! That's right! <laughs> We'll need some cardboard box card. <laughs> some paint and some brushes. <laughs> Stickers and cotton buds. <laughs> A crab. Ow! A crab? No doodle chew. We need fish. This isn't a fish. <laughs> All right, don't get snappy with me. <laughs> and we'll also need some glue and some sticky tape. <laughs> now, this can get a little bit messy, so it's a good idea to put down some old paper or some newspaper first. I'm going to start by bringing in this card circle. And now I'm going to use some glue to stick on a smaller circle for the mouth. Put a bit of glue on that. Let's stick it on. Now stick on some triangle-shaped cardboard pieces, one for the fin and one underneath the body like this for the tail. Now I think we should make our fish spiky. And to do that, we're going to use these things. Oh, thank you, Sophia. These are cotton buds, and we're going to stick these onto our fish. So let's turn it over and stick the cotton buds on using sticky tape. Stick on as many cotton bud spines as you want, and then we can turn over our fish so we can paint it a nice, bright colour. There we are, let's get painting. Lots of lovely bright yellow. And now what colour shall we use for the fish's mouth, fins and tail? What do you think, Addy? Red. Red. All right then, Addy, let's go for red. There, that looks good. We just need to paint the ends of our spines a nice purple colour. And leave it to dry. Our fish is all painted, and now we can decorate it with some stickers. There's one there. That's looking really good. And we can also use stickers for the fish's mouth and eye. There, Mini Makers, do you like our fish? Fantastic! And now it's time to make your own arty party pictures. But first, you need to put on your... Arty apron! Yeah! Because it's time to... Start the art! I love Megan's big red fish. Megan, what's your favourite colour? Red. I thought so. And how did you make his spotty belly? So I found some green stickers and then I stuck them on. Well done. Keep making, Megan. And I wonder, has anyone else ever had any arty, fishy ideas? Let's find out. A long time ago, in a country called Japan, there was a fisherman. Over the years, he caught many incredible fish and was very proud of them all. Oh, what a great catch! Oh, I wish I could keep all of my fish, but 
My house is starting to smell. He so wanted to take pictures of them, but there was one big problem. Cameras had not been invented. <sighs> then he came up with a brilliant idea. That's it! Printing! Over a hundred years ago, fishermen would rub edible ink onto one side of the fish. They would then cover it with paper to make a print of it. These prints were so lifelike that some of them showed the patterns and textures of the fish. Look, it's a flat fish. <laughs> this type of printing was used by fishermen, but it also became a famous type of art called Gaio Taku. An art gallery, the perfect place to show off my fishy friends. Oh, wow. Now, don't try that at home. Now we've got cameras, it's much easier for us to make a picture of a fish. And it's much better for the fish as well. <laughs> now let's see how the mini makers are getting on. <laughs> I love Alfreda's fish. What is your fish called? Spotty. Spotty the fish, and I know why, because it's got lots and lots of spots. And what did you use for the spots? Stickers. <laughs> lots and lots of stickers. And you've been very clever because you put stickers on the cotton bud spikes. <laughs> Zach has made up a fantastic colourful fish. What's your favourite part, Zach? The silver dots. Oh, yes, the silver shiny dot. And what's this up here? The eye. A very shiny fish eye. <laughs> Aurelia has been very clever, because not only has she painted the tail, but she's also put stickers on the end as well. Where else have you put stickers on your fish? On the cotton buds. On the cotton bud spikes. Very good. And what shape have you used for the mouth? A heart. A card heart. Now, Harley, this looks like a stingray, but what are you calling it? I'm calling it a venom ray. A venom ray. And what shapes did you use to make it? I used um, a square and a um, kite. Brilliant. Well done, Harley. Now, keep making, my friend. I can hear snoring. It sounds like someone's asleep at our party. Who is it, everybody? The Shapes! That's right, it's The Shapes, and I think we should wake them up. So after three, ready? One, two, three... Wake up! <laughs> <laughs> Circle. Spin around, spin around in a circle on the ground. I am a triangle. Clap your hands in the air, triangles everywhere. I am a square. Everybody draw a square, draw it here, draw it there. Everybody draw a square. I am a rectangle. Bounce everybody, bounce like you just don't care. What's it going to be? Wait and we will see a shape for you and me. I am a circle. Yay! What picture is circle making? Can you guess? That's right. It's a clownfish. That was fantastic, Circle. It's time to get back on the shelf. <laughs>